Today we're going to show you how to paint some great looking shields for Age of Sigmar, but you can use it for anything out there under the sun. Spiky bits. Make sure you stay in the trenches by becoming a supporter over on Patreon and also scoring yourself some free miniature swag in the process. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out our site, spikybits.com, for all the hot hobby tutorials, news, rumors on all your favorite hobby topics. And head on over to thelongwar.net. That's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content, early access videos, and more. Become a veteran of the long war today. Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. Rob Bear here again today on a fantastic Hobby Hump Day. This is the Wednesday tutorial drop here on Spiky Bits channel. We love painting here on the channel. We love that <laughs> we don't have to do all of these rule book reviews all of a sudden, but don't get it twisted. We love some new releases too. It's great to sit down in the studio and actually get our paint on. And currently we're working on a campaign Age of Sigmar style that Felix, our friend of the show, is putting on here for all of our friends around the area and we're basically duking it out in the Beats Lab to see who's going to be on the top in Age of Sigmar. But, long story short, some models need a little attention. Now, you probably saw my video already on rebasing your miniatures for stuff you might just have laying around. Had a bunch of shields laying around, needed to paint them. I was like, hey, it's tutorial time. Let's show the folks how to do this sweet fade on uh, basically a shield or any flat surface out there, really, and get those great looking miniatures on the tabletop this holiday season. So here's the project. We've got these Chaos Warriors on the left that need their shields painted, about 20 of them, to go with our Age of Sigmar armies. And of course, can't have Age of Sigma Army with some square bases, so we're going to paint up some round bases to go with it as well for these cast warriors. So that's going to be our second video, but just to kind of show you what we're going to do. So this is a great example of something you might find on eBay or at your local game store, you know, selling used. Something that's like kind of half finished, never really got around to finishing it. Somebody gets disenfranchised with Age of Sigmar versus Fantasy and just sells their stuff off. Well, you can scoop it up, sometimes at a good deal, do a little bit of work, and voila, you have some dope looking Age of Sigmar stuff. Because let's face it, this model, there's a lot of work done in this model, and there's nothing wrong with it. Chaos Warriors are a great unit in Age of Sigmar, we just need to paint up the shield. So, to do it today, we're going to be using the Games Workshop Air Paints. So this is the, uh, I guess, triad, so to speak, of what we're going to use. Now, truth be told, I don't exactly like the air stuff. I feel like it's just a watered down version of their existing paints. Uh, if you have any of these colors here, you can just add some airbrush flow improver to them from Vallejo and pretty much get the same effect with a little bit of water, a little bit of work. Um, if you're using the Iwata Eclipse HPCS, it's pretty much designed to push acrylic paints. I can't say how they will do through any other airbrush, but for these right here, I can tell you this much. This stuff goes very goes through the airbrush very well with no flow improver required whatsoever. I mean, this stuff is just super watered down right out of the pot, which it, it'll dry out in your pot too, if you're not careful to be quite honest. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of this Cantor in to my airbrush here and you can see how, just how thin it really is. Like it just drains right into there and it's good to go. So for this particular tutorial, I'm just gonna add a little bit, but if I was doing all 20 of the shields, which I'm gonna do here at some point in the very, very near future, I would have put a little bit more in there, I feel like. Okay, so step one is to just get in here and base coat the crap out of this with this darker canter blue. Should not be hard whatsoever. I don't like this. You can tell this is the Army Painter Spray, but we need it light, we need it darker because it's all about contrast. Contrast, contrast, contrast. And speaking of which, the next step will be kind of in a different direction, I feel like, than what you might be expecting in this project to go. Now that that's all done, we're gonna flip the script, hit it up with our Keldor Sky, and instead of going lightest or darkest to lightest at the top, we're gonna go to the lightest at the bottom. So I want this dark, I want it to be dark up here, reverse fade down, and then we're gonna hit it with some edging that's really gonna make this thing pop. 
because it's all about contrast at the end of the day. So airbrush is loaded and we're going to whoop, flip it upside down just like that. Blow this thing out because I just cleaned it. And maybe turn the pressure down just a little bit. Let's see. Gonna, I'm not really feeling it. So we're going to keep the pressure about halfway, probably around uh, 30 PSI or so. Nice, easy fade right there. So just cutting it in, super easy. I'm not even aiming. I'm aiming off the center point, like right up here, approximately where my finger is. Not even aiming at the model itself, just getting a nice lazy fade in right there. And now you can kind of see what we're doing. We're gonna go towards the light at the bottom there. It's gonna look pretty fresh, especially with a nice uh, crisp highlight at both the top and the bottom around the very edge there. So now we're going for our last highlight. You can see here the gradation between the two. Very subtle, but yet easy to see in the right light. Now we're gonna double dip and we're gonna combine the Keldor Sky 50-50 with Ulthan Gray, which is a blue-gray. It's great for this sort of thing. It by itself, it might be a little too overpowering. So we're gonna mix it up. You're gonna get this like electric blue kind of look right here. That has been sitting in the pot, so we're gonna mix that up, which you can do in here with an old brush. Just boom, 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 boom. good to go. Loving it. Oh yeah, look at that nice blue color. Now, instead of flipping it around and kind of pulling it down, we're gonna go from the bottom up and kind of flip it, kind of throw the paint upwards to kind of make it look like it's starting to glow from the bottom with like this unearthly power kind of crawling up the shield almost. So here it is, just kind of pulling it up and you can kind of see what I mean right there. Look at that sick fade. That's what we're talking about right there. That's gonna look spectacular, coupled with the gold on the shield and then some edge highlighting. Oh man, this, this thing is gonna look so fresh. I'll just hit this one again, just cause I'm having so much fun. Oh man, that's so easy to do, gosh. So easy to do. I got like 20 of these things and I'll be back in like two seconds, I swear. So there's the fade on these shields. It's looking pretty fresh. Now you could stop right here and start detailing it out, which we're definitely gonna do here in a minute, but we're gonna make some magic happen because we have one more highlight, or I guess a low light, so to speak. Grab whatever black, airbrush black you wanna use, throw it in your pot, and we are gonna make this pop. Check this out right here. Aiming right off about quarter of an inch off the side of the top right there and hitting it with some black and the fade is complete. It's super dark to super light and once we glaze that bad boy right there, there is going to be the sweetest of gradients. So yes, we have made that pop. Okay, so there's a trick to everything and obviously here finding the trick is to, to do all the freehand is obviously a good thing. So we're just gonna hold the, the shield just like the guys would hold it here by using their hand. And we're gonna get in here and we're gonna do the detail work on the actual chaos symbol. Now, something, it, it's very easy to do because basically just get some, whatever metal you wanna use. I'm gonna use silver in this case. Um, I, I love the pig iron from uh, P3. I think it coats great. It, it, you don't have to worry about it going over light, going over dark surfaces, it doesn't even matter, it just goes on. It's got a strong pigment and I love it. It's one of my favorites. Uh, Kenny turned me on to it and it really is good. So what I'm gonna do in here, instead of instead of trying to trace on the lines, I'm just gonna go in here and attack it sideways because it's relatively easy to do, to be quite honest. Just get in, get in here, smooth it on, sideways, super easy. Just making sure to be in control now I went a little over right there but that's okay because with the wash I'll just hit it with some of that Cantor blue which you can see this is actually very easy it's a lot easier when you're not trying to uh, film it at, <laughs> at the correct focusing depth <laughs> and at a weird angle but to you guys it looks like it's going on good even though I might be messing up here and there but that's okay because I would have this a lot closer to my face normally but you kind of get the idea you just go in here and just hit it from the sides it's super easy to do then the next step is going to be to give it a wash of black and there's two schools of theory here 
The first being that you could semi-gloss this, which I don't I don't think is a particularly good idea, seeing as how we already semi-glossed it to begin with, because we're gonna hit it with a blue glaze at the very end. So it's gonna go over top of here. So I think just using the regular null oil and just brushing it on, or excuse me, using the gloss null oil, but just brushing it on and not kind of washing it everywhere will be uh, the better choice. Now I'm gonna, there's this little jewel here I totally forgot about because some of these have little extra studs and little extra things. And you just gotta be careful touching the actual blue work. See how I'm using my pinky to brace and to get in here and really get that fine detail done. Now this particular brush here, you've probably seen my hobby head to head by now, the Winsor Newton versus the Citadel. This is, I'm using the Winsor Newton because I actually accidentally mashed my artificer brush at the end of my toothpaste or my toothbrush holder. But the good news is that I left it out overnight and gravity has pushed it back down. But I wanted to give it a little bit more time to kind of straighten out. So we switched back to Windsor, uh, Windsor Newton one today to do this fine detail work here that you're seeing today. So, like I said, we're gonna hit it with the Nolan Oil Gloss now, which is super easy because a lot of times it just puts itself right in the lid right there. And we're just gonna paint that on. We're not gonna hose it down or anything, anything super crazy. We're just gonna kind of treat it just like it was that metal that we just did, which should be theoretically dry by now because it is a little bit thicker, darker of a pigment. Don't anticipate having any problems there. All right, so we're just getting, just basically pushing this on here. Now getting in here is probably not a, not a problem getting in the center because stuff's just gonna recess and get all gloppy there anyways. And there really isn't any detail or any studs to get around on this one, so I'm not too worried about it. You know, that you're not gonna see like this, this super in-depth like kind of contrast because you're already getting the contrast from the shield itself. And I'm also not worried about that, that the wash isn't going around the edges of the trim uh, to form that contrast as well. Because quite honestly, when we hit it with a glaze of Drakenhof Nightshade, I feel like that's gonna be enough to really give it that pop and give it that shade we need. So I'm gonna let this dry, but actually I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna fix that little spot I got paint on, but I'm gonna let this dry first, and then we're gonna give it that, uh, that glaze to really bring the whole project together here. And now that that gloss wash is dry on the silver there, we're just gonna hit it up with a quick highlight to kind of give that pop to the top and the sides there. It's just gonna be another typical hyper highlight with uh, Lothram Blue, which was basically our, uh, I guess our um, our final highlight when we mixed uh, the Alt and, and what was that, Keldor Sky together. We basically made Lothram Blue, which I didn't realize until I was looking through my paints. I was like, hmm, we just made Lothram Blue, whatever. We could have just used that, but we didn't, so it's okay, no big deal. It's all about the option select sometimes and just making sure that whatever you're doing looks exactly like you pictured it. So I'm gonna get a little bit of that on my brush and I'm gonna hold uh, the bottom of the shield by the little handle there. Make sure we got a nice point on the brush here. And now we're gonna work it in just on the edge here, going all the way across, almost in a perpendicular manner between the brush itself and the edge of the shield right here and turning it. So remember, always pull the paint towards you. It's the easiest way to guarantee that you'll have the most control over it. Might not be exactly what you wanted, but you will definitely have the most control over it for sure. And there you can see that nice crisp edge right around the lip there. Now this, <clears throat> this paint's a little bit drier than I, than I wanted it to be. So I'm gonna water, wash my brush off there and get a little bit wetter of a coat because it is actually very important to get that nice thin coat of paint across that edge there because if you mess up too you can always use your finger to erase it as well oh it looks like there's a little divot right there i didn't see that coming all right so there's that and then we're going to go across here as well across the top just uh basically crossing the t dot in the I, E-I-E-I-O, it's easy as that right there. Now on the inside, we're not gonna go all the way around because I just think that would just be too much contrast. So we're just gonna hit the U right here and then pull it around. 
and just kind of climb up the other side there uh, as well but leaving a little bit of contrast towards the top just like that right and then here now that we're flipped on this side we'll just start from this edge and climb that tree right around the edge all the way up boom look at that sweet sweet contrast that was gonna look great on that chaos warrior there now we're gonna let this dry for a second and then we're gonna give it a glaze of drakenhof nightshade all right everything looks nice and dry now on the edges there so now we're gonna hit this with a glaze of drakenhof nightshade now there isn't a gloss version of this available but that's okay we can make our own so i'm going to grab our trusty uh water bottle pal water bottle palette right here as we have a lot of these because we had to drink a lot of bottled water from that hurricane here recently and we're going to add a little bit of 50 50 future floor wax and water mixed to this a couple drops because there wasn't a lot of nightshade in there to begin with mix it up and we're going to make a nice little glaze uh, to basically shade or filter uh, this shield here so once we get that done I'm gonna grab another one here so that we can see what we're doing here's a purple one and I'm gonna pull and you can see right there it's nice and translucent which is exactly what we want to go across this and we're just gonna pull it across the whole thing right here because that's basically what we're doing is we're shading it this is your traditional kind of uh, what people consider a wash is almost should be a glaze. Washes should be a little bit more controlled, I feel like, in the cracks and things. And that's it. It's literally that simple. It took two seconds to do with this flat chisel brush, which is what I prefer. You can see there is no streaks or anything like that. It just went on pretty good. And it basically shades that all together. So instead of keeping you again and waiting for that to dry, which shouldn't take very long. Oh, there's a little divot right there little little battle notch right there but instead of waiting for all of that to dry I'm going to set this down carefully over here in front of the fan and just show you what the end product is going to be and there he is right there this chaos warrior has had his shield completely painted and glossed or and uh, varnished blah and glazed <laughs> too many terminologies I'm not a I'm not an English professor, I don't know these terms, but basically right there you can see it's a nice solid fade that goes in with well with the rest of the model, which is what we got separately uh, you know, with these unpainted shield elements. So now you know how to paint a shield. You can do that for anything from you know, Astartes to any other of the models out there that might have a heraldry shield or something like that. Now conversely, you could do the same exact thing. Just take some uh, tape, some Tamiya tape, and tape it off into sections and then you can do reverse fades like you can have it going from dark to light dark to light and then reverse it back like you see people do with power weapons you could you could very well do that as well um, but for chaos i feel like this this is enough and i'm perfectly happy with this given the condition of the model here you know i'm trying to match and not go above and beyond one particular element of the model itself so there it is uh very easy to do super quick and efficient tutorial if you have an airbrush obviously uh, use it but you can do the same thing just using lots of coats of thinned out paint as well so that's it for this one i hope you enjoyed our tutorial on how to shade a chaos warrior shield but uh, uh, like i said you can use it for anything out there uh errors emissions questions anything you want to ask us drop it in the comments below Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.